Zlatko Zahovic is one of the most recognized players in the history of Slovenia. He was born in Maribor to Serbian immigrants Yusuf and Zineta. He came from a working class background and had a passion for football from a very young age. His skill with the ball was exceptional and Partizan Belgrade striker Milko Gurovski, who was stationed in Maribor at the time, noticed his talent during an indoor game and immediately informed his coach. Gurovski believed that Zahovic had exceptional skills and he could have a bright future ahead of him. As Yugoslavia collapsed, he, like many other talented footballers in that region, had to flee the country. He was recruited by Viktoria Guimaraes and was played as a left winger. However, he struggled to adapt to the club and his manager's system and frequently expressed his dissatisfaction, leading to a ban from the club's premises by the president Antonia Machado. When Vitoria Guimaraes' manager was replaced, his successor gave Zahovic more freedom, which resulted in an improvement in his performances. It was the arrival of Jaime Pacheco, who would later lead Boavista to a league title, that truly allowed Zahovic to shine. Pacheco gave him a free roll behind the forwards, and with Zahovic leading the way, Vitoria achieved notable draws against Benfica and wins against Sporting. On match day 32, Zahovic scored the winning goal in a famous 3 2 victory over Porto, and this was enough for the Portuguese giants to make a move, signing him in the summer of 1996. Zahovic praised the strong team dynamic fostered by coach Antonio Oliveira and the exceptional talent of his teammates at Porto. The wingers Capucho and Jubinko Drulovic were particularly effective and striker Mario Jardel was a regular contender for the European Golden Boot. During his time at the club, Porto won five consecutive league titles between 1995 and 2000 and Zahovic played a vital role in all of those victories. As a classic example of a skilled yet temperamental playmaker, it was natural for Porto fans to become enamored with Zahovic. His long hair tied back with an Alice band, his left foot dominance and his technical proficiency combined with his quick temper made him a charismatic and captivating player. With his color turned up and an air of disdain, he was definitely a crowd pleaser. His last season with the club was one of his best, where he finished close behind Dwight York and Andrei Shevchenko in the Champions League goal-scoring rankings. Although bigger clubs expressed interest, Olympiakos Pireu made the most convincing offer. Under the leadership of President Socrates Kokalis, the Greek club had restructured its debt and, with his wealth and connections, financed the league title in 1997. Kokalis offered Porto an impressive £10 million for Zahovic. Despite Zahovic's preference for a move to Spain and his statement that playing in Greece would feel like being buried alive, he was welcomed as a king upon his arrival in Athens. Thousands of fans greeted him at the airport and he made an immediate impact, even scoring against Real Madrid in a European game. However, early on it became clear that that were issues. Zahovic did not integrate well with his teammates, were put off by his arrogant demeanor and the preferential treatment he received from the team's management. He was also unhappy with the tactics of coach Dusan Bajevic and in a game against Pauk, when he was substituted in the middle of the game, he took off his shirt and threw it at the coach in frustration. Bajevic, who had strongly urged Kokalis to sign Zahovic, would later regret his initial support. As the relationship between the coach and player became untenable, the president made the business decision and let Bajevic go. By the time Zahovic left for a Euro 2000 playoff game against Ukraine, he had already lost the favor of his club's fans. The situation would deteriorate further as Zahovic refused to return from international duty, citing a lack of professionalism in the Greek league. The new coach, Alberto Bion, attempted to mediate, but to no avail. The best player on the Olympiacos team was instead sitting on a couch in Maribor refusing to return. In late January, the relationship between Zahovic and Olympiacos improved as he returned to Greece, immediately reinserted into the starting lineup. However, Zahovic was still dissatisfied with the defensive strategy of his team and it was only a matter of time before his next outburst. It occurred during a crucial match against Panathinaikos on match day 25 of the league when Bigon made the mistake of substituting him. This led to a barrage of insults and theatrics and another walk-off. This time Kokalis was not as forgiving. Zahovic was given a two-month ban and a heavy fine. By the time Slovenia participated in the tournament in Holland and Belgium that summer, it was uncertain where their best player would end up. 
Most people around the world were not well versed in Zahovic's abilities as they only knew him from occasional reports. He was the face of the tournament's most unique team, Slovenia, which had only been officially recognized by FIFA eight years prior. Despite scoring most of Slovenia's goals in the qualifying round, he was not a well-known figure to casual football fans across Europe. This anonymity was shattered during Slovenia's first game of the tournament. Against Yugoslavia, Zahovic was the standout performer, scoring two goals and assisting one more as Slovenia took an early 3-0 lead. Despite Yugoslavia's comeback to tie the game, Slovenia had become the darlings of the tournament. Zahovic scored again in the second group match against Spain and ultimately Slovenia's last act in the competition was a turgid goalless draw against Norway that sent them home. Slovenia impressed everyone at the tournament and for the first time Zahovic had competition for the affection of the nation. Srećko Katanec, the national team coach who led the team from obscurity to success, was still physically fit enough to play himself. He was a skilled midfielder in his own right and a key player in the Sampdoria team that reached the European Cup final in 1992. His calm and composed demeanor stood in stark contrast to Zahovic's demanding attention-seeking persona. For the moment, they had reached a fragile agreement despite Zahovic's unhappiness at Katanec's statement in August that said Slovenia lacked a strong leader on the field. Zahovic's strong performances in the tournament in Holland and Belgium attracted the attention of bigger clubs and the Olympiakos president was eager to get rid of him. Valencia offered less than half of what Olympiakos had paid for him in the previous summer, but it didn't matter as Zahovic was gone to the satisfaction of all involved. This was the move he desired, a better league, a better team and a better coach. However, Zahovic was unable to secure a regular spot in Valencia's starting lineup due to the presence of talented players such as Gais Mendieta, Kili Gonzalez or John Carew. Furthermore, Valencia's coach Hector Cooper was known for his conservative and defensive approach. Zahovic was acquired with the intention of being an impact substitute, someone who could play behind the forwards and create scoring opportunities. It is not surprising that he didn't take kindly to this role. In an interview a few years later, he said, Cooper was just a completely different person in tough matches. He just couldn't stand the psychological pressure, so his teams were always losing. And there is some truth to this statement, because despite reaching consecutive Champions League finals, Cooper and Valencia did not win either of them. Zahovic's penalty, taken late in the second half of the final, was saved by Oliver Kahn. By the end of the season, it was clear that Zahovic and Cooper's relationship was irreparable. Cooper needed a dependable squad player who was content with a limited role, while Zahovic needed to be the focus of attention. That summer, Benfica general manager Luis Felipe Vieira traveled to Maribor, offering Zlachovic a regular playing time in Portugal. At the time, Benfica were not as strong as they are today, and they faced internal conflicts and struggled to qualify for the Champions League. They believe Zahovic, who has proven his worth and value in the Portuguese league, could be a mentor for younger talents such as Mantoras and Shimao. Injuries greatly impacted his first season and many Benfica supporters were skeptical about his connection to their rival team. Some believed that he was having difficulty fitting into a squad that already had talented left-footed playmaker Arthur. Despite his efforts, it was hard to shake off the feeling that Zahovic's return had not lived up to expectations. Slovenia started the World Cup with a 3-1 loss against Spain, Zahovic was angry at being replaced by teammate Milenko Acimovic and kicked over a bottle of water as he left the field and there was also a report of an altercation that had occurred in the locker room. Initially, the Slovenian Football Federation attempted to downplay the altercation. They stated that the issue had been resolved internally and that Zahovic would continue with the team under caution. The Slovenian players avoided answering questions from the media as they had been prohibited from discussing the matter publicly. Soon after, Katanes held a press conference where he announced his resignation from his national coaching position after the tournament. He mentioned the altercation with Zahovic as well as the insulting remarks directed at him. Without their most talented player and with their morale shattered, Slovenia finished the tournament with just two goals and zero points. Zahovic returned to Lisbon, where he was the best player on a team that struggled defensively. In November, José Antonio Camacho, a coach known for his toughness, took over as manager and the team's performance improved immediately, securing a spot in the Champions League. The following season was marked by the tragic on-field death of striker Miklos Feher. Zahovic led the tributes in the game against Akademika by scoring the only goal and gathering his teammates in the kneeling circle where they pointed to the sky in dedication to their former teammate. Together they managed to hold on to second place in the league and even defeated Porto in the Portuguese Cup final 
spoiling their championship celebrations. Jose Antonio Camacho left in the summer to join Real Madrid and Zahovic's influence on the team diminished. The new coach Giovanni Trapattoni did not see a future for the aging player and his contract was terminated in January 2005. In a statement, the club expressed its gratitude for his professionalism and commitment. By February, Zahovic had turned 34 and realized his powers were waning. He could no longer reconcile the player he was with the player he had been and chose to retire, having played a role in securing Benfica's first league title in 11 years. Zlatko Zahovic is remembered as a legendary figure in Slovenian football history. He is known for his exceptional talent on the field as well as his impulsive and temperamental nature. Despite his character dividing opinions, his contribution to the sport in Slovenia are undeniable and he is considered a deserving candidate for a statue in his honor. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate your support. If you found out something new or compelling, please leave this video a like and let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Your feedback is important to me and it helps me create better content for you. If you enjoyed this video, you might also want to check out something similar by clicking right here. I think you'll find it just as engaging and informative as this one. Make sure to also hit the subscribe button so you never miss out on new content. Thanks again for watching.